that volume in excess of this volume that is inspired and expired so that is your reserve so when you need to exercise apart from tidal volume we have a reserve of this much ventilation that is made possible now we got two diagrams where on the y axis we got the volume and on the x axis we got time this might seem confusing this is maximum mid expiratory maximum expiratory flow rate and this is maximum mid expiratory flow rate so this is also called fes 25 to 75 percentage and this is also called fes 200 to 1200 ml so now we we'll try to understand why this term like this and why it is term like this or why it is maximum mid and why it is maximum so this is volume again and this is time over here this was flow rate and this was volume i'm keeping on repeating this because this is where students get confused they see two different graphs and they have difficulty understanding it because they are not properly realizing what are there on the x axis and y axis especially in this rigid system so this is volume and time so in this graph we need maximum mid so that is the important part over here maximum mid expiratory flow rate so out of this whole vital capacity we are taking a middle 50 percentage So this is the total volume, the vital capacity over here, and from this vital capacity, see, this will be your twenty-five percentage. See, remove this much of air, twenty-five percentage of air is done. We keep removing it around here. This is the middle. This will be fifty percentage of air gone, and over here somewhere, this will be seventy-five percentage of air gone. So this part from twenty-five percentage till 75 percentage. So this is the middle part. So this is the early part, late part. This is the middle part. So the middle 50 percentage is taken. So that is why it is called maximum mid, maximum mid expiratory flow rate. So that is again why it is called FES 25 to 75 percentage. Okay. Now over here, what exactly are we trying to figure out? We need to. find out a rate rate here will be volume per time so the time taken for it to go from 25 percentage to 75 percentage so this is the volume so this is your 25 percentage point like this so for it to reach 25 percentage it took this much time for it to reach 75 percentage it took this much time now for a change of 25 percentage to 75 percentage for this amount of change in volume we take the time that is required this was the time that is required so how do you calculate this this volume you can if you know the total vital capacity you can get the 25 percentage volume from that you can get the 75 percentage volume from that and you can get the volume by that and later if we can measure this time interval between that you also get time so by that basically you just me measure how much flow rate is there in the middle part now why is this important this middle part middle part that i am talking about that is because initially from here when we start expiring air from the proximal parts the large bronchi the bronchioles all that the large airways is where it comes out from and later on in this part by the end the terminal bronchioles and alveoli so this is like alveoli and the terminal bronchioles so ultimately that is the small airways this terminal bronchioles are the small airways and the part in the middle 
is a medium size avis this is important because many obstructive diseases affect this part when you talk about asthma cp and all that this medium part is first affected so this is like the most sensitive part it's not that these are not affected these will be affected later but this become very sensitive index of your flow rate so that is by maximum mid expiratory flow rate because obstructive disorders are very sensitive especially when you take the medium part so that is your importance of maximum mid expiratory flow rate that is ftf 25 to 25 that is the middle 50 percentage so initial 25 percentage is large later is a small and middle is a medium avis that is about maximum mid expiratory flow rate and in a similar way we will take maximum expiratory flow rate so over here we said that it is ftf 200 to 1200 ml so instead of this percentage we are taking 200 ml so consider this is the pile capacity we take 200 ml and from 200 ml we take till 1200 so we take this part of volume so volume is fixed volume here will be 1000 ml so here when we talk about volume per type volume is fixed and it is in this part initial part and for this we look at the time factors so from here till here this time interval so that is what we take over here for time so the time taken for this much volume in this initial part so that is the maximum accelerative flow rate what is the importance of this now when we took a look at this what did we understand peak accelerative flow rate is happening here it's not happening here it's not happening here it's not happening here it's happening over here in the initial part look at this so the peak accelerative flow rate the maximum flow is going to be somewhere around this region so that is the importance of taking this value maximum expiratory flow rate so this was the maximum mid expiratory but out of the total this will be the maximum flow rate so again that is a sensitive index if there is some obstruction that part will be affected the peak expiratory flow rate will be affected so this is another thing that can be used to measure things moving on to the next part we'll take a look at certain types of ventilation breathing capacity breathing reserve uh, respiratory minute ventilation and things like that so you need to first understand what ventilation is it is a air flow the amount of or the volume that goes in and out of lung so air is there outside the atmospheric air that comes in it goes all the way till the terminal bronchiole and the alveoli and um, air comes out so the amount of air that is coming in and coming out that is ventilation reaching till alveoli coming outside that is ventilation and the air from there from the alveoli diffuses so that is diffusion into the blood vessel and where it is transported by proteins through the blood so either in dissolved form or bound to proteins it is going to get transported so there are three components when you talk about respiration there is a ventilation there is a diffusion and there is final transport so that is what ventilation means the amount of air that flows in and out of lung so when we talk about respiratory minute ventilation we'll just take a look at how it goes about so this is what we had seen earlier this person is inspiring normally expiring normally inspiring normally expiring normally so this is your tidal ventilation and this can keep going on so this volume is your tidal volume so in this person when we put a term like the respiratory minute ventilation so this is a minute so the respiratory minute ventilation so this is a normal tidal ventilation so in tidal ventilation the amount of air this is the amount of air whether it is coming in or coming out that is the amount of air that comes in and out of lung so how many times do we breathe normally in a minute we normally breathe something around 12 to 16 times a 
minute. So, in one minute, we breathe 12 to 16 times. And each of those, let's just say a value of 12, for example. And each time, that person breathes, this tidal volume, this 500 ml is what the person is inspiring expiring. So, by the end of one minute, if he breathes 12 times, so 12 into this 500 ml. So, that is your respiratory minute ventilation that happens. That volume of air that moves about in one minute. So, like this, it goes 12 times or 12 to 16 times and the volume that is exchanged at the end of one minute with tidal ventilation. That is your respiratory minute ventilation. So this is your tidal volume. This is your respiratory minute ventilation. So this is coming as uh, questions for you guys where you have to calculate the values. So different values are given. So you just have to use this 12 and 16 value, right? Or 14 uh, in an average and multiply it and you'll get the final value, right? So the questions can be given where they tell you the rate also and based on that you'll have to calculate. So basically this is the principle involved here. So that is your respiratory minute ventilation. So this happens in tidal ventilation. So normal breathing in the amount of air that comes in and out of the lung in one minute. That is your respiratory minute ventilation. Now we'll ask the subject to breathe in and breathe out as forcefully as maximally as they can and as fast as they can. So if you take vital capacity, it would have been something like this. It would have got over like that. But that is not what is happening. We are asking him to keep on respiring fast and as much as he can. So fast ventilation with as much as he can. He needs to keep inspiring and expiring. So this volume would be slightly lesser. This is the tidal ventilation. From here, instead, we are asking him to take in as much, take, give out, take in, give out, take in, give out like this. See the curve? So, this is slightly different, slightly lesser than the vital capacity. We are not stopping in there, we are keeping on going. So, like that, if you maximally inspire and expire for one minute. So that ventilation is maximum voluntary ventilation. So this is maximum. Maximum and voluntarily ventilating. So this is respiratory. Normal respiratory rate, uh, the person amount ventilating. So that is respiratory minute ventilation. Here this is maximum voluntary ventilation. So how much air it goes in and out of the lung in one minute. So in a similar way, whatever the volume which is measured here into number of uh, breaths that are taken and that for one minute will give you the final value here. So that is maximum voluntary ventilation or it is called breathing capacity. So it is called maximum breathing capacity. We already mentioned how capacity is some volume plus something, a reserve. So usually a volume plus a reserve will give you a capacity. So what is the volume and what is the reserve here? Why is it called breathing capacity? So if this is the normal volume that is going in and out of lung, and this is the maximum that can go in and out of lung. So in excess of this, so we'll forget this, We'll forget this. This volume is forgotten. In excess of that volume, that volume, in excess of this volume, that is inspire and expire. So that is your reserve. So when you need to exercise, apart from tidal volume, we have a reserve of this much ventilation that is made possible. That is a reserve. So this is your reserve. How do you get that reserve? Breathing reserve is given by this maximum voluntary ventilation minus your 
respiratory minute ventilation see how simple it is so that is a reserve how much in reserve to your tidal volume that you can inspire expire so in reserve to your respiratory minute ventilation how much more can be fit in so that together will form your breathing capacity maximum breathing capacity so now we got something called a dyspneic index so this breathing reserve that i talked about when the percentage of this with respect to how much is totally available say for example if this was your tidal volume and this was your respiratory minute ventilation this much and if this is your total maximum voluntary ventilation now you can see that this is taking up this much part so the percentage of this the reserve is very good there is a lot of reserve that is present over your tidal ventilation that means it is a good reserve but let's take a look at another another person this is a tidal volume this is this maximum voluntary ventilation and over here take a look at the reserve compared to that out of the total this the reserve is much lesser so this is a in percentage see for example some people might not be even like this what if it's like this you see how much the percentage has dropped so that sort of a thing when we talk about breathing reserve the reserve that is made lesser so the reserve per your maximum voluntary ventilation so that will give you a proportion of how much voluntary the breathing reserve is available when you take a look at the maximum voluntary ventilation so that gives something called dyspneic index if that dyspneic index goes less than 60 percentage then that means the person will go into breathing difficulty especially when he exercises or does some sort of stressful work so for him the reserve is very less so he is exerted he is not able to cope up with it and will go into dyspnea so that is what it means the breathing reserve is very less for this person so we got your respiratory minute ventilation we got their more uh, maximum voluntary ventilation we got your breathing reserve and we got the dyspneic index very simple so questions on calculating this will come for uh, mcq so you just need to understand all these things okay thank you